Um, our first presenter is Matthew Daly. Um, he is an associate professor of history at Grand Valley State University in Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, which is my hometown, and which uh, incidentally, actually the university is in Allendale with a, a downtown campus in Grand Rapids. Um, but also uh, another recent claim to fame for Grand Rapids is it is in line to be uh, the host city for uh, Society for Industrial Archaeology Conference um, right now slated for 2023. And Matthew was just telling me about some of the, um, the, the tour possibilities, the venue possibilities, and all of the um, people there locally in Grand Rapids um, who are excited about the, uh, um, the prospect of the conference. And so we, we've got a lot of good energy um, and, and a lot of interest down there um, for planning that conference for uh, 2023. Um, Matthew's uh, uh, Particular interests include urban history, industrial history, and public history and the history of the Great Lakes. Um, and he'll presenting, be presenting today on the, the topic of the Stickley um, Furniture Company. Um, Grand Rapids is, uh, was the furniture city, is the furniture city still in a heritage way um, in terms of industrial heritage. And, and so his, his talk uh, relates um, very directly with that. So um, without further ado, um, Matthew, if you want to share your screen, um, I'm going to put you on spotlight. And if I... All right. Well, thank you for having me. I very much appreciate it. Uh, I am going to have my little uh, my little slide. So yeah. So this is uh, starts off with the, the sort of an interesting advertisement: the quaint furniture of character by the Stickley Brothers. Uh, this is one of the more uh, uh, sort of uh, famous uh, names that is in Grand Rapids furniture. And what's really interesting is that they are. Uh, we, we don't really think about the, the sort of the breadth of all of the Stickleys, and that's going to be a, a big component for furniture heritage. What we think of now is the legacy of the later family, which has now uh, been taken over by other companies. Um, so the next thing is going to be here. Let's see here. I got to get my slide. There we go. Um, for those of you who are not really familiar, Grand Rapids, Michigan is about three hours, three and a half hours from uh, north, northeast of Chicago, about two and a half hours west of Detroit and on the western side of Michigan. Uh, it's about a half an hour from the, the Lake Michigan coast. Uh, and it's, it's sort of a, a very centrally located place, uh, what we would think of for maybe a, a lot of other sort of retail, but not necessarily for furniture. And one of the things I always like to joke to people is that there's really no particular reason that Grand Rapids should be the furniture city. My students always think that it's because there were lots of trees. And my response to them always is, yeah, there were a lot of trees and they cut them all down really quick. So it's one of those sorts of interesting pieces therein. When we think about the Stickley Brothers uh, uh, Furniture Company, we want it's going to be founded in uh, 1891 by uh, two of the younger brothers of the more famous of them, Gustav Stickley. Uh, these are going to be two younger brothers. One is going to be uh, that was most notable is Albert Stickley, uh, who will be born in 1863, and John George. Uh, Albert and John George are going to work in New York State with uh, their their brothers. Uh, they will come to Grand Rapids because by the uh, early 1890s, Grand Rapids had really become the furniture center of the United States. Uh, it had started off in the 1870s as a sort of a cabinet making location. Grand Rapids is in the Grand Valley. Uh, Grand, the Grand River runs through the, uh, the area. It is not particularly big, uh, but it does flow all the way out to Lake Michigan and has a natural stopping point of Rapids. Uh, and that helped to foster the sort of the trading capacity and also the ability to be sort of the regional market. We're sort of far enough from Detroit and far enough from Chicago to need that regional market. Uh, throughout the 1870s and 1880s, uh, a series of companies had really expanded into more and more sophisticated furniture, sort of culminating in a series of prizes at a number of the world's fairs, including in 1876 uh, in, in various locations in Philadelphia, and had really become known for this sort of operation. Albert and John George uh, departed from their brother Gustav, who had a sort of a, a, a sort of an all-encompassing vision. It's increasingly during the 1890s of what he thought, sort of a, a, the connect connectivity of art, architecture, furniture should all come together. Uh, Albert and John George were were sort of devoted to that. John George more more so, DG as he's better known, and the sort of the driving force. What he did was he came to Grand Rapids and really wanted to create a more marketable brand of furniture. He is the most, shall we say, entrepreneurial, and he is by and large 
the most the most successful at it. But he's more of the furniture manufacturer rather than uh, simply uh, sort of a, a person dedicated to sort of our entire artistic concept. So what we have, if I can get my slides to work here, all right, uh, is going to be uh, Grand Rapids, and the, and this is looking north to north to south, and where my cursor is over in here. Uh, the river really has a, a huge number of factories. At any one time, there are 50 to 60 factories that are operating, making a variety of products related to furniture and wood-based products. Everything from cabinets and household furnitures, uh, furniture over to carpet sweepers. Bissell Carpet Sweeper is a Grand Rapids name as well. And one of the things was is that it, as increasingly as the 19th century went on, you didn't need to be tied to the river for water power. And what they do is they move down to this new area, down to the south side of town, along a new street called Godfrey Avenue. And along with Loose Furniture, Michigan Chair Company, and Reddick and Suite, they set up a new set of, uh, of factories. So they're, they're out of the floodplain, but they're close to the main rail yards. One of the things that really made Grand Rapids the furniture city is going to be the huge expositions that will be held twice a year in January and June. And they will bring thousands of buyers. Imagine Walmart, everybody has to come to Bentonville, Arkansas. Everybody had to come to Grand Rapids. And that's how they were able to sort of manipulate Chicago, Cincinnati, all of the much larger markets to come to Grand Rapids and to have that sort of entity. And it also became a real point of uh, both copyright and trademark to be, have the symbol of the Grand Rapids furniture, the Gra made in Grand Rapids uh, furniture logo in the lower right hand side. So that's extremely important to be able to have that sort of piece there. So I'll just get my slides to, to go forward here. All right, so the next one is also gonna be, is, is, the, is the building that they build down on Godfrey Avenue, 1891. It starts off, uh, Stickley changes names a number of times. It starts off the Stickley Fancy Chair. And this is the initial building, it's gonna be in 1891. It is a wooden framed brick fronted building, uh, three stories tall. Uh, initially, it will not have electricity. Uh, this is uh, right around 1900 in that era. It will be fronted in, a, in that sort of community. And what, uh, what Stickley begins to do is, he, is it exactly what it sounds like. He starts off making fancy chairs. And that's going to be the sort of the concept that he's going to be able to really sort of work with. Uh, this is looking uh, uh, down from a Sanborn fire insurance map. You have Michigan Chair Company factory, which made pretty much just chairs. And then you have uh, Stickley Brothers, and Stickley Brothers will expand into chairs and tables, and Redigan Suite, a smaller, more specialty firm. If you look here, the Chicago and West Michigan, and then later on, uh, the, the Chesapeake and Ohio and the Paramarquette will come in. There are these long uh, sidings that come into these areas. Uh, all of the factories and suppliers in Grand Rapids are interconnected with a dense uh, rail network. If you see the yellow buildings that are gonna be added off the back of it here, these are gonna be the extensive sorting and drying of, of facilities that will be required to make sure that the furniture is of the proper moisture content and so forth. So it's a very extensive uh, operation. Uh, inside the factory is, is pretty much lit by daylight. Yes, electricity goes by, but not until around 1920 will it be fully electrified. Uh, as you can see, everything is run by daylight, very much off the very large windows. This is the chair assembly sort of component uh, for the area. Here are tables being put together. Again, this is about 1920. You get the one single light uh, and it's really gonna be heavily daylight operated. This is a very big component um, to the uh, uh, facility at hand. So that's extremely uh, uh, important to keep in mind there as well within here. And this is a back image of the, uh, of the, of the, of the, the plant. You can see the sidings and there's the wood sorting, the various grains. They're also going to be having the sort of the drying shed sorting, the kilns. They also did their own veneering and they worked with another company, uh, Whittacombe Furniture, to have a more extensive uh, veneering company. Michigan Chair is right next door. Uh, the school you can see in the, the sort of the upper part of it, um, of the image right above the, the sort of the piece here, uh, is also going to be uh, another part of that sort of, uh, uh, right in here is going to be that sort of uh, school. So it's very much in a valley. And this is one of the later sort of chair assemblies. Um, there are still uh, some handmade furniture companies uh, in Grand Rapids and they still make furniture pretty much the same way. You can see that uh, particular vice system uh, in operation today. Most famously by 1900, uh, JG, John George leaves the company and it's Stickley Brothers pretty much in name only. Uh, Stickley moves into the mission arts and crafts style, the sort of the blocky format. 
Uh, they really only stick with it for about, uh, about nine, 10 years. By 1909, they begin to shift over uh, away from this sort of uh, mission style and the caning. It's a uh, very beautiful uh, material. This is fully less known for. They do win a, a, a prize from the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair for their, uh, facil for their material. Uh, in addition, you can see the sort of the building, the worker housing. This is looking north from towards downtown from the facility. Uh, the, the, the community builds up around it. You can see that the tower gets truncated. Uh, this is a building that continually gets added onto. That's a tradition uh, for most of uh, Grand Rapids is furniture factories, a, a large number of which have been adaptively reused. Uh, and they're gonna really grow around that neighborhood. Uh, James Sano is gonna be the first Japanese resident of Grand Rapids. And he will uh, uh, be very significant in being the head of decorating from around 1915 till his uh, untimely passing in 1938. And so it's a really very uh, a sort of a, a distinctive piece that one of the things that Albert does is he leaves that sort of strict mission style and moves into where the market goes. So it shifts over to colonial America, a little bit of Art Nouveau. This is an image of a decorating uh, center in the building. He also does uh, public uh, sort of uh, exhibits. And this is one of the pieces that he had done, uh, the sort of the detailed intricate sort of artwork on the other pieces of furniture that, that Stickley uh, really sort of uh, adapted into. Where Gustav ran into trouble and had his vision, Albert really ran much more like a more conventional businessman. And so he was able to make a, a great many different products. Uh, and this is a beautiful hand decorated piece. Um, this is also from the, these, many of the furniture pieces are from uh, the collections of the Grand Rapids uh, Public Museum, which has a, an absolutely a stupendous furniture collection, which they are currently digitizing. Um, here's the other sort of component. Later on, one of the sort of the other pieces that's gonna go in is, uh, they're going to move over to much more sort of uh, different styles. Ralph Demon will take over as the chief designer uh, and will have these sort of beautiful hand-drawn sort of sketches to where they try to have the advertising and the images of what will be the new version of quaint furniture. So it's a really interesting approach and shift over to that sort of operation. So it's going to be a, a variety of changes within here. Uh, and you can see here some of the other advertisements, American classic, uh, sort of the various pieces. They're going to really leave that sort of early. And this is going to be around 1935. And you can see the more period pieces that they get into, uh, again, with a lot of sort of leather work and decoration, but nothing that rigid. One of the more amusing things is they had antique peasant furniture, supposedly from Eastern Europe, and it offered a, a different sort of set of styles for this sort of operation. And one of the interesting pieces is that uh, Stickley is one of the founders of the Furniture Manufacturers Association, which is the big furniture cartel. They controlled uh, how companies related to each other and helped maintain control of the furniture industry in Grand Rapids and stave off their larger competitors. Um, Stickley will be, one, uh, Albert will be one of the primary uh, drivers in the creation of the Furniture Manufacturers Association. Uh, but it, he will, uh, by 1924, when this picture is taken, uh, he begins to develop a real health problem. He leaves his business and he retires to his uh, cabin in Waters Meet, Michigan, uh, in Gogiba County in the far western Upper Peninsula. Uh, and, but he dies in uh, 1928 on time, a rather untimely death. Uh, one of the images here is this is from the 1940 aerial views of the city. Uh, you can see the full scale of, uh, of, of the Stickley Brothers Company along Godfrey Avenue. This is looking to the north. Michigan Chair is also expanded. There's loose furniture uh, and there's Redigan Suite and uh, the other sort of connections into the location, to the, into the, the neighborhood around it. So it's a very dense industrial area. Keeler Brass is to the south and it still operates today. Unfortunately, the, uh, after his death uh, in 1928, the company goes on until 1954, uh, but really is not as successful and it follows the trajectory of Grand Rapids Furniture downward. This is the site, unfortunately, today. Uh, the building was demolished and left abandoned and demolished in the early 1970s. Uh, but you can see that there are a number of buildings, Michigan Chairs facility and then loose furniture. This is looking right uh, to the next, next to it. Uh, are still there. So Grand Rapids has a lot of its heritage. Stickley is a famous name. It's eye-catching, but unfortunately its site has been cleared. And you can see that sort of area is still very much today. Uh, the, the plant would be essentially right where the cursor is at this time, but unfortunately it's, uh, it's long been demolished in that regard. Uh, so Stickley Brothers is, is a, a rich name, uh, but really its most famous products are really uh, a very short period of time. I would encourage everyone, if you're interested in more in furniture uh, history, to check out furniturecityhistory.org from the Grand Rapids Historical Commission. Uh, and it has a huge amount of material on that. And this will be a, a growing page as we go forward 
uh, with a new design and so forth. But Stickley Brothers uh, is a very famous uh, name and it is well worth paying attention to uh, as a part of the rich uh, history of Grand Rapids furniture. So thank you.